Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Optimize Your Tech Investment with Safe and Reliable Cloud Hosting for your MIP system. My name is Kim Salman. I'm a Marketing Coordinator at JMT Consulting. I'll be your moderator today, and I'm excited to be hosting this session. This webinar is brought to you by JMT Consulting. We are financial management solution specialists for nonprofits, and we have nearly 30 years of experience helping nonprofits with technology and business processes for the back office, which is why we are covering this topic today. JMT understands that it can be daunting to make changes to your software, and we are excited to show you the options JMT has for migrating to the cloud safely, affordably, and with as little discomfort as possible. Before we kick things off today, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. First, today's webinar will be recorded and will be emailed to you for on-demand access along with the slides. Next, we'd love to hear from you during today's presentation, so if you have a question, please feel free to send it through the Q&A tab at the bottom of your control panel. We will have a dedicated Q&A session at the end of the presentation where we will answer all of your questions, but you can submit them at any time. I'd like to get us started by welcoming our speakers. Joining us is Tom Thornton, Chief Operating Officer at JMT, and Dan Wharton, our MIP Client Account Manager. And I will go ahead and pass the mic over to them to introduce themselves and get us started. Over to you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Kim. Thanks, Kim. Uh, across the globe, COVID-19 has forced a lot of nonprofits to rethink how their finance teams operate. Those nonprofits with updated technology and cloud access had fewer disruptions when forced to work remotely. JMT understands that it can be daunting to make significant changes to your software, whether it's out of fear of taking resources out of the mission or knowing about better options but not being able to make it happen. Uh, your fears and concerns are heard, and JMT has worked hard to bring you options that can reduce risk, that will reduce risk, and offer flexible pricing. Uh, today, you're going to learn how to maximize those investments uh, you've made in your technology by migrating to the cloud using JMT's cloud hosting partner, Ace Cloud Hosting. We'll show you how cloud migration options and how to lay out the least disruptive plan for migrating your MIP software into the cloud. Quick recap uh, before we get started. I uh, do want to remind you that uh, we'll be recording the session. We'll be sending it out. Uh, give us about 24 hours to go ahead and get that recording out to you. Um, as Kim mentioned, we would love to hear from you during today's presentation. Ask questions. Uh, feel free to post those during the presentation or hold them off until the end when we have a, a QA session. Um, it'll be roundtable for everyone. Um, we'll be addressing everything then. Uh, I think today's presentation should take about 35 to 40 minutes um, uh, to deliver, and then we'll have you know 10 to 15 minutes to, to wrap up. All right, let's jump in. Uh, we're going to start off with a few introductions. You'll meet today's presenters, and we'll look at how JMT has grown over the years. Then we'll deep dive into cloud hosting, when is a good time to migrate, why should you migrate, and how to choose the proper service provider. We'll end the call again with Q&A from the audience. My name is Dan Wharton, and I manage roughly 350 active uh, client accounts in the US as well as overseas. I started my nonprofit career with a bill up. Um, the distinguished gentleman to my right is Mr. Tom Thornton. He is JMT's chief operating officer um, also, best tennis player I know. He's been working with MIP for over 20 years, having served in middle level management roles, service, sales, product management, really everything in between. Um, just to be fair, he's the only tennis player I know, so I don't know if that helps or hurts him, but regardless, uh, I'm too scared to play even ping pong with him. Anyway, the two of us uh, have a combined 30 years' experience with MIP, and we're happy to share our experiences with you today. Well, we want to tell a story, and to tell a good story, we should have perspective. Uh, JMT uh, does have over 20 years of experience in the industry, for, uh, in the nonprofit sector, excuse me, 
as Janty has grown over the years, so has our ability to support each client promptly and with personal care. We have the trust of thousands of nonprofits to strive uh, and strive to offer the care, expertise, and innovation that attract customers for life. Uh, JNT, is, um, JNT Consulting is MIP's largest partner, not just in volume, but also in size. Uh, today's presentation focuses on MIP fund accounting, but we want you to know that there are plenty of great solutions out there. JNT has gone through the vetting process, gone through and met with hundreds of vendors to bring you the best in class solutions that uh, uh, focus exclusively on fund accounting, um, uh, accounting payroll, budgeting and forecasting, cemetery management, AP automation, document management, and a whole lot more. Uh, at JNT, your mission is our business. And rest assured, everything that we do is going to lead to better processes and greater efficiency. How did we get our start? Well, uh, JMT was founded back in 1991 by a nonprofit finance professional self, Jacqueline M. Tiso. That's the name. Jackie was, I think, in her third or fourth role as a, as a nonprofit finance person. She left and started uh, the, cons uh, the consultancy. She'd been a customer for um, several years. She'd even implemented a few software um, programs and, and technology implementations. But at the time, she just wasn't thrilled with the overall customer experience. So with that in mind, um, she took her lifelong uh, uh, passion for nonprofits. Um, and decided to found the consultancy. And again, that happened almost 30 years ago. Now we have regional offices in Austin, Texas, where Tom and I are at, Nashville, Tennessee, where Jackie and much of the support um, staff is, and Patterson, New York, where a lot of this, uh, a lot of our customers know us from. It's no coincidence that MIP is headquartered right down uh, the road here in Austin. And yes, the barbecue is better. Come on. Here is a small sample of our clientele. Um, take a look at uh, some of the names that you see here, and you should notice a, a, a theme. They're all nonprofits, and they're all over the map when it comes to mission driven activities. And of the 2,000 organizations that we've served over the years, nearly 800 of them are still active. So, great retention. Approximately 250 of those are hosted in the cloud. Now, does this mean that the remaining 550 so organizations are housing their own accounting software internally on the server? Not necessarily. Uh, many of them are using things like remote desktop or virtual private networks to make a remote connection to the to, to their organization software. Hosting is not for everyone though. Uh, JMT can absolutely and will absolutely provide you uh, with an understanding of what is required, um, what options you need to weigh, what you need to factor, um, and help you determine a path to move forward. Uh, remember, here at JMT, we put your needs first and we help you find the best solution available. IT resources can can be broken down into a couple of categories, uh, personnel and infrastructure. In my mind, personnel is all about who's keeping the lights on. Uh, many nonprofits under a certain size, let's say maybe 5 million annual operating budget, have already, uh, uh, many of those have already elected outsourced IT to a third party. It's pretty common. This makes a lot of sense and allows the business to focus more on delivering the mission. Infrastructure is more about hardware and software servers and Microsoft licensing, networking applications, data storage, support contracts. Now, if you lack any of these, lack in any of these areas, your ability to work efficiently is going to be greatly diminished by uh, the inadequate tools that you are using. Some organizations use software like remote desktop and VPN, like we mentioned, to connect. Uh, this would allow you to work from home, but there are drawbacks. You often hear about slowness or lags when using uh, a remote desktop or, or virtual private network. That goes back to the type of hardware that you're running internally. It could also uh, go back to some of the software they're using. There's also a ton of maintenance involved with these solutions. Now you're paying extra in IT uh, overhead. Most or well, all of these can be offset by migrating to the cloud. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
The last and probably most compelling reason to migrate uh, is the, the, the paradigm shift. Uh, your board has decided to outsource IT. It's happening a lot. And if it happens to you, you have the option to invest in your own IT resources, or you can contract a service provider. Which is better for you? Well, uh, keep one thing in mind. You don't want to select an IT consultant who doesn't have any experience with MIT. Never heard of the program? Find someone who does. Um, or the other applications that you're using. This is something that absolutely can and probably will lead to trouble. Anyway, uh, I'm about to take a break here and hand, hand the presentation over to Tom. Thanks, Dan. Sorry for the pause there while I figured out how to unmute my, uh, my microphone. Uh, thanks for the great introduction and setting the stage, uh, Dan. I'm going to take you through a little bit of a, some of the criteria that we used at JMT. We were in a situation this year where we needed to uh, evaluate and select uh, a new partner for hosting our MIT clients. You know, we had uh, our previous partner had some challenges uh, via ransomware and the uh, and the fallout from that. And we we were under in a bind where we really needed to provide uh, not just a, a capable but also a reliable, secure solution for our clients who wanted to host their MIT fund accounting. And so uh, we did a lot of research and looked at a lot of different options out there. And we, um, we felt like it was really important to be uh, thorough and methodical about it, and make sure we really understood what was the right criteria for selecting a hosting partner. So Dan, if you'll uh, advance to the next slide. Um, you know, I'm gonna take you through five different uh, things that you really ought to be evaluating as you're considering a hosting provider. Uh, and these are the ones that we used. Uh, first of all, the experience and reliability of that partner is really important. Um, you know, how long have they been uh, providing this type of IT, outsource IT service where they can host your application and provide that remote access for you so as if it were running on your own network? Uh, not only that, but not just hosting applications, generally speaking, but similar applications, Windows uh, client server applications like MIT that run on SQL Server, that requires similar infrastructure and maintenance. Uh, that reliability piece comes in in the form of, this needs to be at least as reliable, if not more reliable than it would be if you were running it on your own network. And so, uh, you know, access to statistics that are uh, uh, reliable, uh, making sure that they've got contractual uptime guarantees to make sure that there's uh, uh, service credits in the event that they fail to meet those guarantees. Uh, and most importantly, not just, you know, what the vendor tells you, but do they have actual customers that are referenceable? Do they have testimonials? Do they have people out in the marketplace saying that they actually put their money where their mouth is? So these are experience and reliability is number one. You can go to the next slide, Dan. Uh, number two is that they have to have the the scale and capacity to be able to handle a lot of clients. Dan was mentioning the, the number of MIT clients that JMT supports is a lot, you know, the hundreds that are currently running on-prem, but we have, uh, you know, we have about a hundred that we are supporting right now that are hosting uh, in one form or another. And so to be able to take on a lot of clients quickly without any of those clients uh, feeling like they're overwhelming the hosting provider's capacity. Uh, so it was important for us to find a, a partner that had the scale and redundancy to be able to provide uh, not just uh, capacity, but also the infrastructure and, um, and failover uh, capability so that it would uh, be resilient. And so, you know, things that we looked at in this area, you know, how many uh, customers do they have and are they in this industry? Uh, do they, you know, are they operating out of a single data center uh, in your hometown, or are they operating out of multiple data centers and multiple geographies? And that data center infrastructure is really important. Uh, you, you've heard about sort of certifications that data centers must, uh, that they frequently talk about their um, SSAE 16, 17 um, audits and certifications, these things are all about, do they have the physical environment, uh, security environmental controls uh, and uh, other measures in place to provide uh, a highly uh, resilient, hardened infrastructure for their customers that they're hosting. 
uh, it's also really important. We, we stood up over 20 clients on this uh, new platform in the space of a couple of weeks. And so being able to handle uh, onboarding lots of organizations simultaneously without a service level drop is a big important thing. Uh, responsiveness in the form of support and making sure that we can not only uh, troubleshoot problems in a timely way, but also just uh, for, for a client who has a sense of urgency to get up and going, they can stand up a server for a client in about four hours from the time that that request goes through. They're very, they have to be very quick. And then finally, uh, some of our clients are uh, running really big, complex configurations, not just MIP, but MIP plus three or four other applications with integrations, with custom reports, with other customizations to that environment. And so it can't just be a cookie cutter configuration. It has to be able to deal with uh, clients who have very, very uh, nuanced needs in terms of their hosting requirements. You can go to the next slide, Dan. Um, having gone through the, the very, very difficult uh, ransomware scenario with many of our clients earlier this year, security and threat mitigation was extremely important. Understanding their security model, making sure that there was no, uh, you know, getting hacked was a very, very low probability through things like multi-factor authentication. Making sure that I have both hardware and software firewall technology in place to to uh, keep nefarious actors out of their network. Uh, data encryption, making sure that uh, outside of this that nothing's getting inter intercepted. Uh, do they have uh, tools and uh, policies and procedures in place to prevent attacks, whether they're brute force or some of the other style uh, attacks like uh, distributed denial of service attacks and things like that. Uh, they take it even further. Do you have the ability to restrict who can even access based on their physical location through IP, uh, IP address restrictions? And then finally, you, anybody who's used uh, Windows-based computers for any length of time knows that part of your security policy has to be staying current and making sure that you're on the latest version, that you're applying all the security updates on a timely basis to make sure that any exploits that have been discovered are addressed. And so once again, our hosting provider has to be on top of that and addressing these things proactively, not just at our request. Dan, you want to go to the next slide? In the worst case scenario, if something bad happens, you know, how quickly can we get back to work? This is another thing that impacted us in our, uh, in our uh, troubles earlier this year with our previous partner is that uh, how quickly can I get back to work? We have clients, unfortunately, who went weeks without access to their MIP or their data. And so uh, making sure that there's a process, procedures, protocols in place to make sure that not only is data being backed up, but does, does the customer actually have access to their data? Uh, can, they, can they have a copy of it for safekeeping on a periodic basis? Um, is that data being, uh, being backed up offsite, you know, uh, the, Metaphor we like to use is what if the data center got hit by a meteor? What would what then? Um, as far as ransomware and malware, uh, obviously making sure it's not just uh, being able to recover if you get hit from it, but what are we doing to prevent it on the front end? Another term that uh, was really important is the restore point objective. The re restore point objective is if there's a catastrophic failure of the server or servers that's hosting your data, how quickly can they have you back uh, working again? And so uh, just about every hosting provider you'll talk to will uh, be able to answer this question, but you wanna ask, you know, what is the restore point objective for the service that I'm signing up for? And so, uh, and this is really, once again, in the event of a catastrophic failure where the server that was running your software is not gonna turn back on, how quickly can I get working again? And, and for the partner we selected, that was about 10 hours, which is actually pretty fast if you think about it, if, the, if there was no hope of uh, recovering that. That's, you know, that's like a worst case scenario situation. Uh, we talked about geographic redundancy. I have a data center in Chicago, I have a data center in uh, Northern California, I have a data center in Texas. And do I have the ability to uh, have fallover support to one of those other data centers if 
one of those data centers were for whatever reason to, to not be available. Uh, redundant equipment is important too. Uh, this is not just storage, it's processing, it's uh, all of the uh, environmental equipment, whether that's power supply, whether that's cooling, all of that uh, equipment needs to be redundant because you don't want a single point of failure anywhere in the environment that you're working in. And then, uh, you know, once again, we're talking about the infrastructure of, the, of, a, of a business or a nonprofit. And so um, different organizations operate in different, uh, uh, different geographies and uh, with different operations, with operating hours. And so in the event of an outage, you know, when is support accessible and uh, for us that had to be 24 7 365 and, and that's the case with the partner we selected uh, next slide Dan all right most importantly and the reason we're having this call is is that it really needed to be a partner that would work well for the customers or clients as we call them that we serve which are MIP fund accounting users so being able to uh, quickly spool up a uh, a production environment for a client that will be optimized for running MIP and the SQL server uh, that houses its data. Uh, being able to customize that environment for specific use cases. I use my career, I use uh, drill point, I use uh, other add-on applications that work with MIP. Can I host those as well? Um, does that have the ability to, for customization? We have some clients who have done some very specific things on their uh, SQL server to do custom integrations or to modify certain behavior in MIP and, and can that be supported uh, with the hosting partner. And so once again, it's, uh, we're not just talking about a hosting provider, but we're talking about an MIP hosting provider that can provide uh, incremental value to people who are using MIP fund accounting as their uh, fund accounting solution. Dan, you wanna move to the next slide? All right, so let's talk about, uh, Dan already mentioned, uh, we ended up selecting Ace Cloud Hosting. There's a lot of different reasons why we chose to work with them. First of all, um, you know, our, our uh, background check on them came back clean. They were actually had an excellent uh, reputation for quality, performance, and reliability. They're very, very big in the, in the Intuit, uh, QuickBooks, and tax uh, software world where they've established their reliability. Uh, they have a 99.9999% uptime guarantee. And what the reason that's important, and that's a lot of nines, by the way, the reason that's important is that uh, if they fall short of their uptime guarantee, they start crediting back your hosting fees. And so uh, their service level agreement is really uh, robust and it really uh, is designed to hold themselves accountable for delivering uh, an extremely reliable, consistent service. Uh, they do this supporting over 20,000 uh, customers in 40 countries worldwide. Uh, they, like I said, specialize in hosting uh, small and medium-sized business accounting software applications like MIP, QuickBooks, Sage, and lots of other uh, different uh, small and mid-market uh, accounting software applications. We talked uh, about the infrastructure, security, and disaster recovery uh, uh, requirements that you should be paying attention to. They checked every box. Uh, they have shown a tremendous amount of willingness and flexibility in their, uh, their uh, just approach to supporting JMT and our MIP clients. And what we've entered into is with, with them is a partnership. We're not just referring clients to the service, but we've actually partnered with them where ACE is providing the infrastructure and uh, foundation for what we're doing. And JMT's support team is actually working directly with you as the client to help you get your hosting environment provisions set up, your data uh, uh, restored in that environment, and we're supporting you on an ongoing basis in your use of MIP in this environment. So Dan, if you'll go to the next slide. So a couple things about their platform I want to call out specifically. First of all, they work in at least seven. I, last, last I checked, it was seven, but they said they were actually uh, getting an, uh, another one uh, going. Seven different data centers across the U.S. So that geographic redundancy, all of which 
our uh, SSA 16 type two, SOC two certified tier three and tier four data centers. So these are top of the line, very, very robust, secure uh, infrastructure uh, data centers. Uh, I mentioned the multi-factor authentication. This is that thing where that, you know, you haven't logged in a long time, they make you punch in a code that got texted to your phone in order to log in. This is an essential security feature. And if you don't have that today, you should. And this is something that everybody has the option to uh, activate in their ASOSing environment. I mentioned the uptime guarantee. Uh, they have all kinds of hardware, software, and human protocols in place to help prevent um, ransomware, malware, and other types of nefarious things happening to your data. Uh, we talked about the importance of the redundancy, not just in terms of hardware, but just making sure that that failover support is available in the event that there is a catastrophic failure at a single point in their infrastructure. Also, the other important thing is, is that uh, each user operates in an isolated environment. So what that means is, is that even though your, uh, your hosting environment may be in the same data center with another ACE customer, if that other ACE customer uh, makes a mistake and gets victimized in a phishing uh, attack and ends up giving you know, uh, somebody the ability to load some malware onto their environment, because you're isolated within the ACE environment, the fact that that other customer got infected will not affect you. Uh, finally, the other thing that we had to, just felt like was essential is that we, uh, we wanted to make sure that our clients had to access to their data at any time. And so there is a service available, it's optional, but there's a service, a lot of people have heard of iDrive. It's one of these uh, cloud backup services where you can actually set it up to where a copy of your accounting database, as well as the related files from your MIP share and other things that you have going on in your hosting environment, can all be backed up on a periodic basis to a secure web uh, service called iDrive, which will uh, you can then have access to securely to have access to that data should you need it. And so a lot of our clients who were uh, impacted by that ransomware attack earlier this year really wish they had something like this because if they did, their recovery could have been as simple as, oh, well, I'll just install MIP on my own server then and restore my backup and I'll be back to work. They didn't have that. And so as a result, they, they were at the mercy of that hosting provider and their ability to recover from the ransomware attack. Let's see. I think we got one more here. So, so we're recommending ACE, uh, be, yeah, and, and we selected to work with them, and we hope that you'll consider working with our partnership. Um, this is something that gives you just a tremendously greater amount of flexibility in your deployment of MIP than M you can with MIP Cloud. So you may know Community Brands has MIP Cloud, which is kind of their new uh, cloud version of MIP. And you say, well, why don't I just use that? And for some clients, you know, we've actually got a lot of clients who use it. If all you want to use is MIP, that's fine. And you can do that. But if you want MIP to work with something else, or if you want to do anything custom, or if you want to have, uh, you know, uh, options in terms of how you're deploying it, you really get one version and it's just MIP and it's kind of a walled garden uh, in MIP cloud. So if you need more than that, you really ought to look at uh, the JMT ACE hosting option. Uh, it also gives you control over when upgrades happen. So one of the things that's a benefit of being on the ACE service with JMT is that if you don't want to, so right now there's a brand new MIP uh, release that just came out here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, if you don't see anything compelling in that version upgrade that makes you want to install it right now, you can elect not to do it. You can say, you know what, I'll just wait for the end of the year when the update for 1099 comes, comes out and I'll do that one. So you have greater control as, as to when these upgrades happen for your organization. Um, it also gives you an opportunity to just have a single number to call as far as getting support for your MIP system, which in, encompasses both MIP and the hosting environment itself. Our same support line at JMT will help you whether the issue is how do I do this thing in MIP or it's why am I having this weird behavior uh, in my hosting uh, session? Um, 
I talked about uh, some folks want to host more than just MIP. And so I have some HR software or I have a fixed assets application outside of MIP that I use. Can you host that? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, we talked about customizing your database or integrations. And then once again, I just think that there's a really compelling story behind Ace Cloud Hosting and their reputation and the level and quality of service that they bring to the table. So these are all things I think you should, ought to consider as you're thinking about hosting. Dan, do I have one more slide, or am I handing it back to you here? Let's see. I think I've got uh, I've got this next section. Okay, well that's it for me. Uh, be sure to type your questions into the Q and A if you have any, and we'll cover those at the end here. Awesome, thanks, Tom. Um, I'm going to pull up a couple reference points. Uh, first, Forbes published an article earlier last month which talked about how the pandemic has forced enterprises to adopt cloud technology more rapidly than they ever have before. Um, the lesson learned, uh, the benefits outweigh the risks. Um, there's a great quote from that article, cloud computing has never been more important. It has already enabled companies to continue operating seamlessly when just 10 or 15 years ago, the pandemic could have easily brought the business process and productivity to a halt. Um, another reference, uh, a marketplace published an article, um, uh, actually a couple weeks after that Forbes article, uh, and how companies like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google stand to benefit the most from these recent changes. Uh, when asked why, the author highlighted key benefits that apply to organizations of all sizes. The first big benefit is the ability to scale. The use of public cloud means that you can scale your applications as the needs dictate. Flexibility is a huge benefit. Migrating uh, multiple applications to the cloud means that you can find your way to get them to communicate with each other. And that's a much easier task with the advent of cloud and its integration tool set, things like APIs, um, web services, uh, things like that. Another thing Marketplace pointed out was that some organizations have been, have been a little reluctant to adopt cloud, or at least so. Um, a couple examples, uh, think financial services and government agencies. Uh, they have to prepare a bit more, but even they're starting to make significant strides towards cloud adoption. Best news of all is with all of these competitors buying for your business, the, the cost of cloud services overall has actually decreased. So speaking of cost, uh, you may be wondering you may be wondering how hosting fees are determined. Uh, what are the variables? Are there any upfront fees to consider? Um, uh, well, I don't think this is going to blow your budget. Um, I don't want to make any assumptions, and I can tell you that it wouldn't take uh, take long to figure out for sure. Uh, if you want to obtain a free quote, simply email us here at cam at JMT Consulting. You can see the email address at the bottom: c a m at jmt consulting. Dot com. Uh, give you a second here to jot it down. When you email us, uh, just expect us to turn around and ask a couple questions. Uh, we just have a few basic questions that uh, are variables that play into the uh, ongoing monthly cost for hosting, as well as any potential upfront um, uh, one time setup fee, so to speak. All right, Cam, it's jmtconsulting.com. By the way, that's uh, a way to get a hold of really anyone here. If you're not sure um, who to talk to at JMT, you've got an MIP-related issue, just go ahead and email that, uh, that address, and we'll, we'll route it internally, and you'll hear from us um, very quickly. So we're pretty much at the end of the presentation. What happens next? Um, I don't know how many prizes to give out, but hopefully you did find some information, value, true value, in the information that you received today. Um, there's also lots of potential in the pursuit of happiness, and what I'm talking about is your happiness. Uh, I would suggest that you pursue your interests, find a partner with a proven methodology who can help you find the right answers, a recipe for success, if you will. Now, we're biased, but we think JMT has that recipe, and we can share it with you. We're here to help you find your happy place. I also want to let you know that our team will be contacting you next week uh, to talk about the webinar. Why did you register? What, what prompted the request in the first place? What were your expectations? How are you going to use this information? Where will you go from here? We're happy that you joined us today, and we want to be there with you in the future.
All right, Kim. Let's yeah. uh, open it up for questions and answers. Any any comments? Anything? Great. So thank you, um, Dan and Tom. And if any of you guys have a question, drop it in the Q and A tab, and we'll get it answered. So we didn't have any questions come through yet, but um, I did. Let me jump in. Okay. So let me jump in. There was something that Tom said that um, I can give an example. You know, what are the key differences between, um, or a couple of key differences between what you might find in the ACE cloud versus MIP cloud? Um, first and foremost, you do not have the ability to create on demand backups, meaning there's no button that says backup MIP in the MIP cloud. Um, iCloud is, is unique to ACE, but uh, that's something that you cannot do within within that cloud environment. Um, another biggie uh, that you know came as a recommendation earlier, but some folks don't don't um, consider it. Uh, don't place as much importance on it as as they probably should. Multi-factor authentication that's not available in the MIP cloud either. Um, not knocking it, just simply saying that those are two key differentiators that uh, you may and should consider uh, when selecting the right cloud service provider. Okay. Um, so can you guys clarify um, how long it takes to get started if someone was interested? Sure, I'll take that one, Kim. Uh, okay. You know, there's a few, there's a little bit of uh, administrative stuff on the front end. Uh, Dan and his team uh, would work with you to gather the nece necessary information and get the, the uh, service uh, provision uh, from a contractual standpoint. Once that's done, uh, then we can start the actual technical process. What, uh, what we're telling people is that to expect about 24 hours from the time that you've got all your paperwork in and the payments uh, arrangements are made, uh, for them to be able to go through the entirety of the technical process of provisioning your environment. So that means that they'll get a copy of your data, they'll install the software in a, uh, your own provision hosting environment, they'll get it configured. Uh, part of the reason it takes about 24 hours is that they don't allow data onto their network without going through a, a very, very thorough uh, um, testing process to make sure that it's not infected in any way with malware or any other problem that would uh, uh, just not be good for their service. Uh, once it passes that test, um, the environment's usually already set up, the software is installed, and it's just a matter of restoring the data in the appropriate place. At that point, it's a matter of creating uh, user logins and testing to make sure that the environment, everything appears to be working, and we start rolling that out to your team. Uh, and those logins are tested by you. Uh, the data is validated by you to make sure that it looks like it's the right data, that the right copy of the data was provided and restored. And then you're, you're off to work. Uh, there's usually just one. other minor things, making sure printing's set up properly and that you're able to print reports and checks and things like that. But that's usually just a couple of minutes to validate. Awesome, thank you. So it doesn't look like um, we have any questions, so we can go ahead and wrap this up. So if you guys have any final words for everyone. I just okay. appreciate your Tom, any final words? Yeah. Exactly. Thanks for joining. Um, stay safe. Great. So um, thank you, Tom and Dan, for your time today. And we hope you all enjoyed the presentation. If this is something you're open to learning more about as it relates to your organization, we'd love to meet with you individually. You can contact us through the email Dan put up on the slides um, earlier, or you can respond to the email that, that we're going to send out with the recording um, in the slides, and that will go straight to Dan as well. So you can also join us for future um, webinars, and by you can view those by going to our website, jmtconsulting.com, and clicking on the Training and Events tab. So this will conclude our webinar, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.